he needs medical attention. But he probably lives his life on this chain, right? Correct. It's not supposed to be happening. I think it's inhumane, it's not right. In fact, there's a law against it. it. Seems like this problem is just too big for Detroit Animal Care and Control. So, what's the city doing about this? Let me take a break for okay. a minute, please. Right now, the city of Detroit is overwhelmed with unwanted dogs. In fact, in August of this year, Detroit Animal Care and Control took in a record number, 790 unwanted dogs. The city says it has so much on its hands, it doesn't have time to enforce a law against dog chaining. This is such a huge issue. Now, city council voted unanimously for the law back in 2017, and the law states a chain like this, and this is really heavy, and people actually are using this, is illegal. Now, they say if you use a lightweight chain like this tether, it is legal, but it's still illegal to keep a dog tied to it for more than three continuous hours. The law is clear, but we uncovered the city does not enforce it. Vern Avenue on Detroit's west side. Our local four investigative team finds a dog confined on a heavy tow chain. We return hour after hour throughout the day and find the dog is still chained to the same spot. <laughs> It's a dirty, dark secret. Dogs chained and forgotten in our neighborhoods. City officials don't want to talk about it. Detroit may be a great place for people to live, but for dogs, Detroit can be a very cruel place. There are so many chained dogs in Detroit without the actual laws being enforced. Melanie Thomas and Chantel Resnicki see up close what life on a chain does to a dog. We do community outreach here in the city. They donate dog houses, food, and legal dog tethers to dog owners. But as a nonprofit group, all they can do is make the lives of dogs living on a chain a little more comfortable. They don't have the authority to enforce the city's law. Hello. Melanie and Chantel call themselves the Karens. A canine animal rescue emergency networking system. We call ourselves the good Karen. All right. I went along with the Karens as they checked in on dogs on Detroit's east side. They've been at this house many times before. What are you doing, sweetie girl? They're a little more confident than I am. But this time, the Karens are angry. Oh my God, there's another dog. They got another dog. First, there's a new dog on the property, and that's a violation of their assistance agreement with the family. Why did none of these dogs have any food or water? Yeah. Water at the bare minimum. You don't have right. food, fine, give them water. Right. Um, this is this is an upsetting situation. I'm yeah. not gonna I'm not gonna lie. Hey, what's going on with the dog? The Karens contact the dog owner who admits that all four dogs on the property are chained up 24-7. Hold on. A Rottweiler's chain is tangled into a fence. And this dog's collar has severely injured his neck. Why does so he have that? Because he just keeps trying to yank himself. Because it's so tight on his neck that it becomes embedded. Okay. So what happens is, and then once it opens up, it just rubs and rubs and rubs. And, and you don't even want to go back there. Oh, okay. Okay, because I was just back there and I was like, okay. no. I'm, you brave. The injured dog's name is Luck. His owner agrees to give him up to the Karens. Just a sad reality, which is never end. Right there. We went looking, and it didn't take long to find more examples of dogs confined on chains throughout the city. Leaving Detroit neighbors mad. This isn't the kind of neighborhood environment they want. It's torture for these pets. You're just bordering on animal abuse at that point. In just a few days' time, our investigative team found two dozen chained dogs in Detroit. Looks like they're chained to the fence. Most were confined on heavy chains, which again is illegal. Others were on lighter chains but had no shelter, water, or food, which is also against the law. Looks like he's on a heavy chain in his yard. Local board producers returned to three different dog locations throughout the day and found the dogs still chained past the three-hour limit. Okay, so we've got dogs being chained up. Enforcing animal laws is the city's responsibility. Lori Soul is interim director of Detroit Animal Care and Control. The rule is they're not supposed to be there for more than three hours, but they are. Yeah. So what are you doing about it? Well, we can only do what a witness will testify to. Soul says her department is busy and enforcing the city's dog chaining rules is up to the public. You have to have your eyes on it for three hours straight. 
then once you do that and you give us a call we'll come out and write a ticket but you'll have to be agreeing to go to court to be a witness because we can't enforce if you don't want a witness and most people don't want a witness. You're kind of depending on residents. Absolutely. Scene. Absolutely. And a week before this interview, my team contacted Detroit Animal Care and Control and reported four of the violations they found. Producers reported that two dogs had been chained all day with no food and water in sight. But it took a week before Detroit Animal Control went out to investigate. Somebody took the time to call. You wanted them to be responsible. Let me take a break for okay. a minute, please. This is why I don't like to do these interviews. I'm just saying, it seems like this email system isn't getting to the right people. It seems like the phones aren't being answered. So there seems like something inside here could be done better to help you. The agency didn't issue any tickets for violations of that three hour rule, even uh, though our producers returned please, again and again and found those dogs chained to the same okay. spot. We don't see the dog for three hours, so we mm -hmm. can't. So then why have the law? Well, I don't, it's a good question. What should be changed? Um, I think we have to, to reword the law. I really do. Okay. I mean, it's, should, it's how, the way it's written is really not enforced. And that's the problem with the law. Unless a member of the public is actually camped out for three hours watching uninterrupted, how do you enforce the law? Now, we reached out to Detroit City Council members and to Mayor Duggan. No one, no one wanted to discuss the issue with us. Detroit police told us they don't get involved in animal issues. All animal calls go to animal care and control. And you saw demand exactly what happens when you call. Yeah, and you know, it's one of those situations where it potentially puts neighbor against neighbor. Now, we saw the Karens take away one dog. Karen, what happened to the other ones you saw? Well, uh, we talked about luck. You saw him going, and that black dog did have to be euthanized. Uh, for the other dogs, the Karens did send me this picture. They built fenced kennels, and they're keeping a real close eye on them. There's so much more to our investigation we couldn't even put on air. So head on over to YouTube, our YouTube channel for extended video with the voices in our story. We go and follow the Karens, and there's also uh, more on that confrontation. You can go to clickondetroit.com and also read our producer's blog about this issue. And we will stay on top of this, and I am going to continue to ask the city to talk to us about this. Yeah, it's definitely piqued my interest. Yeah. Thanks, Karen.